Dear, the Vice President of Zambia, Mr. George Kunda. As usual, I will start with the salutations. Uh, Dr. Mohan Ko, Director General Commonwealth Business Council. Mr. Paul Skinner, Chairman, Commonwealth Business Council. Uh, Honorable Mike Foster, MP, Parliamentary Under Secretary of State, DFID. Distinguished guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I have a written speech, but along the way, I'll talk about one of the famous topics which has been covered during our deliberations and that is China. Since the last quarter of 2008, the world economy has been characterized by a level of turmoil last seen during the Great, Great Depression of the 1930s. <clears throat> Across the world, from the advanced economies in the West to the smallest economy in Africa, world leaders continue to seek ways to turn around the situation. In my address to you today, I want to focus on how Africa, in particular, can weather this storm and emerge from it uh, stronger. I'll also talk about our experiences in Zambia. I also highlight I the important role that international business and multilateral institutions must play in facing the, these challenging economic times. By the way, I also bring you uh, greetings from our president, Mr. Rupia Bozan Banda, who was supposed to uh, grace this occasion, but delegated it to me. It is a much-used cliche that Africa is endowed with vast resources and that by properly exploiting them, the continent can develop. However, what is often not stated is that the level of investment needed in order to exploit these resources is enormous. Given the limited level of savings in African economies, these investments can only come from external sources, from Europe, America, and of course other large economies, such as China. These investments are unlikely to come into the continent if certain vital prerequisites are not put in place by African countries themselves. Allow me to briefly outline what these pre prerequisites are. One, improved governance. The vital role that, le that leadership and institutions play in, successfully de in successful development transformation is an often stated fact, the importance of fighting corruption respect for the rule of law, respect for the will of the electorate, these will give a signal to the business community that their investments are safe and they can share in the process of building 
prosperity for the continent. By attracting this investment, Africa can, Africa can continue to sustain the growth that has been achieved for the past few years. Two, investing in people and infrastructure. Africa can only sustain the current growth trajectory by investing in its people and infrastructure. Ladies and gentlemen, our people have for many years had limited access to education, particularly skills training. This has made us far less productive when compared to other regions such as East Asia. Consequently, firms would prefer to, re to locate their industries in these economies rather than in Africa. Our competitiveness in this area will only improve, improve if our workforce becomes more productive. And education and skills training are vital. Related to this is investment in infrastructure. It has been shown that sustaining high levels of growth depends to a large extent on the efficient provision of infrastructural services. However, as a percentage of GDP, the level of investment in infrastructure in sub-Saharan Africa has been declining over the years. Granted, resource mobilization has been a challenge, but we have no choice but to allocate substantial resources for infrastructure development in roads, rail, energy, water, and sanitation. One way resources can be pulled for infrastructure is through public-private partnership. This forum presents a unique opportunity for us to explore this part. By the way, in Zambia, we are putting in place legislation in the next meeting of Parliament, which starts in July. We shall put in place legislation to regulate public-private partnerships. Three, encourage private sector development. Ladies and gentlemen, the current global economic crisis has taught us one important lesson, that government must put in place prudential regulations to oversee the workings of their economies. It has not been shown, as some have argued, that governments must take over the running of the economy. For growth to be sustained, the private sector must continue to be the main engine of growth. However, there is now an urgent call to ensure that this is done within clearly stipulated rules and guidelines. In many African countries, these rules have tended to stifle rather than encourage the private sector uh, participation moving forward Africa has put in place measures that will protect investments while at the same time not stifling innovation and inventiveness by our people, by our people. Ladies and gentlemen, the Zambian government has made many strides towards achieving these areas that have highlighted as being vital in sustaining growth given reality. One, we are among a selected few countries in the continent that have respected the will of the electorate at every election, observed the rule of law, and are committed to good governance. That is in the governance area. We have well laid down rules governing property rights. We have recently initiated the process of streamlining the business and the regulatory framework, and we are a peace-loving nation. 